Hello folks, uh, this is James Hardy's second board, uh, from a distance it looks clean, you certainly don't see all the green everywhere but you know, looks can be very deceptive, I've already cut the battery off this and I've already replaced the socket for the gal there because that was a horrible mess underneath, even though it looked clean run about it, the socket was totally gone, all the pins were broken on it. Um, I'll just give you a brief fly pass to the board here. Um, you see some green there, some green there. You see the corrosion under the ramp here. This this is what we're going to be dealing with. It's even made it across to the 6861 here now. I was doing some research and I was looking online and you can still get this chip. Not in that package, but you can still get that chip. So I might be doing some experiments with this board. I might buy what's called a PLC C44 adapter and use the modern chip in a, in a socket. So, um... A couple of basic things to check. I mean, we know it's not running. We've got seven lights of death there. I call them seven lights of death because I used to dabble with an Xbox and they had three lights of death. It was pretty much the same thing. Red lights flashing or staring at you in the face. A couple of things to check. Um, we've got... We've got nothing there. Hi there, nothing there. So that should be a low. That's not working right. Um, pin 3 and 4 of the clock coming from the crystal which is um, not looking too healthy let's see we've, we've sort of got a clock but uh, it's, it's nothing that the board can run with I'd imagine if we check the enabling Q output on the processor, we won't get anything meaningful. And we can check that just now. Uh, it's 40. And there's the clock. Which isn't great. Forty three and three for seven foot six. Mem ready line stuck high. I believe that should be pulsing on this board when it's running. Sometimes it's but it's trying to run. Thirty five stuck. Thirty four stuck. That's in E and Q. They're not running. Um. Thirty nine thirty eight for. 43, 7. 47 is high, I believe it's stuck high, which means the board is not coming, going into reset, let alone going out of it. Uh, we can check down here at U11. These are a couple of address lines. That one's floating, that shouldn't be floating, that's supposed to be an input. There's a cut trace there. And we can actually see it right there, there's a cut trace about there. Hard for you to see in camera, but I can see it there. That's probably coming for that second pin, so that'll need to be fixed. And we don't appear to be having anything off that either, so this board wouldn't run even if it did come out of reset. So, first plan of action is that crystal's obviously shot. And that chip there is obviously shot. So first plan of action and you know, come to think of a Q one there as well. Yeah, that's gone. Change out the crystal. We'll change out this chip. And we'll change that. Yeah, I see it. I'm going on the collector there of that. Yeah, that's not getting much of a... Yeah, Q1 is your reset transistor. It's called COMP on the schematics, but all it does is it pulls the trigger line of this low to set it off. And if there's a fault with the board, the software itself can set this off to re-trigger the reset. That's basically, I'll give, give you a brief idea of how, what areas you've got on the board. That's your reset circuit and missing pulse detector. 
but it relies on this transistor to drive it. Transistor is connected to the GAL, and it's connected to a couple of logic circuits as well. And basically, all it does is if the board detects a problem in software with an error trap or whatever, it can set this on to drive that low to trigger the reset line, which comes back to this and out of there. And at the minute, that doesn't appear to be doing its job. This should be resetting over and over, I believe. Uh, I believe it's uh, is it, is it five or six. Or five. Yeah, one of those two pins should be resetting over and over. I, I keep forgetting in my old age here that what is that the pin 556 outputs from, but I can tell just by going here that the board isn't running because if this was stuck in reset, that would be getting fired over and over, so that would be dropping low. And it's not. So, we're going to be replacing those two areas. We're going to have to replace quite a few things on this, I think. I do have a brand new RAM, yes, brand new. It's not called the 6264 anymore, this is a kind of unrecognisable part number, but it's same number of pins and same pin out, so it'll work. Uh, I will have a 6809 handy somewhere, and like I said, you can still get that 68681. So replacing the brains of the thing isn't going to be too much of an issue. Uh, I may upgrade my everything power supply as well so I can actually drive the 12 volt line. At least to see if the relay control works. You know, the power supplies in these have a relay that switches the 12 volts on via. There's a relay in the power supply. An Omega power supply is a relay. And it's controlled off the line off here. Don't really need it for testing, but it's handy to see if it works or not. If I wanted to test if the 12 volt was coming on, I would just check it. Uh, there's an output coming off this 68681 sets high to drive low. And all it does is it pulls a it pulls it makes a connection to the coil that's in the relay in the power supply and turns the relay on. Yeah, we'll get into this in a minute. Uh fire up trusty soldering iron and we'll see how we get on. Okay. Answers on the postcard, why do we think the crystal doesn't work? This is kind of what you can find with these mega boards, hidden dangers. Uh, I'm not a bad man, but I would say the crystal's burnt. I don't know how it would even be able to burn, but yeah, the crystal's not healthy. You compare it to a good one, someone, one of the ones in the board where the barrier hasn't had its way. He's, uh, it's not going to cut it, is it? Yeah, so that's coming off. We'll take the chip off as well and then we'll clean all these areas up. Right. I can already tell it's going to be one of these repairs. Got that chip off, and once that chip's out of the way, you can immediately see the one above it's gone as well. Right there, you can see the end pin's gone. So, a couple of these pins don't look healthy, but I'm not lucky that that there, I think the pad may be a little bit worn out on that, but that's a power trace. So if there's anything wrong with that, I can just jump right to the power pin and the next one along. But this chip here, this one's got to come off as well. Now, same story under this transistor, that's gone. And with this out of the way, I can already see this is going to have to come off. So it's, yeah, you can already see how a lot of people don't like Megas. I mean, I don't mind them. But once you take one part off, one part usually at least you find damage, you've got to take another one off and then another one off and another one off and they can get expensive to repair. These two down here don't look too bad, I know there's a trace broken under there, I can see it there, it's right here. 
these two are going to have to come off and that's going to, have to come off but for testing the now to see if the ball will do anything I'm going to repl just replace these two for the minute I'm not going to put a new transistor in here for the minute what I'm going to put in instead is a switch and I'm going to take control of the reset so I can make the board reset when I want to, not when the board feels like it. So we'll get on with this. Okay. So we're not too bad under that chip, but there's two traces under there we need to look at. Pads only cleaned up, obviously. And I can get you a good close up now of where that broken trace is. You see, you see there, pad, see it, pad, space, trace, that's gone, but it's an easy way to fix fears, and it's an easy way to fix those traces there, I'll need to get some flux when I'm out today, so I can do a good turning job with that trace there, but I'll be able to fix that trace without jumping in. Uh, I'm not too worried about that D30 at the minute. That's to do with the battery. I've got continuity here, so I'm okay with this. I'm not too worried about this chip here. For the minute, it looks okay. I mean, the legs in these old boards aren't going to be crystal clear or shiny anyway. They've been heating up and cooling down for 20 odd years by now. Ram wise, we've got corrosion under here, but I've got continuity, so I'm not too concerned yet. Uh, the gal here, legs are a little green, I could do with burning a new one, but the gal worked on another board, so it's okay. You can see some traces I've already fixed there. Sand them down, check the continuity, okay, right. So, next step, put a switch in, oh, there goes focus. Put a switch here, between the collector and the emitter of Q1, so I've got control of the reset. Board probably won't work like that, I think it needs to have control of Q1 and do certain things when it, it wants to. I believe, although I'm not sure, that when you close the door on the Mega machine, it doesn't have a software reset as such, it just fires the main reset and starts the board off again. Yeah, it's said crystal position, he's cleaned up. So it looks like... <sighs> I would say you got lucky with this board because it looks like the gases for the battery passed over the board, which is why you're getting this sort of stuff all way over here and you can see some obvious corrosion over there. Mm -hmm. I believe these boards, most of them anyway, sit in the machine like that, so that would make sense. But, you don't appear to have had the all over corrosion that a lot, I see with a lot of these. I mean, I could probably show you an example of one, hold on. They don't, it certainly hasn't got... Yeah, it certainly hasn't got that level of corrosion. I mean, you can see that one's, this board's completely shot. There's no, there's not much hope for this at all. The track, all the tracks for most of that section of the board are dead. But I'm quite surprised this one doesn't have that because the red board's actually more fragile than that green one there. The traces on this are finer, they break easier. But, Yep, yeah, so that's where we are so far. Not going to be able to do a lot more with it at this stage now because I need to do some cleaning up and then I need to go out and do my jelly chores and errands. I mean, real life has to go on, but I'll, for the minute I'll replace this crystal and I'll replace these two. I'll get these areas a wee clean up with sandpaper and alcohol wash. A wee bit of very, very light sandpaper, I might add. I've seen some people go at these boards with like heavy grit stuff. Lightest sandpaper you can get. You're only wanting to very, very lightly scrub the lacquer off the board so you can see the traces underneath and sand away the top layer of this green to reveal nice shiny copper so you can turn it up. Don't go grinding at it or all you'll do is you'll 
sand the traces off the board. I mean, sandpaper is going to take layers off. So, yeah. I'll get on with this now. To be continued. This is going to be... I know I keep saying I'll get, get back to this and go with this. This is... I'm going to tack these all together as one video. So, the owner can see what I'm up to. Alright. Uh, so... I don't know why Megan made the battery terminals that big. That's fucking huge. But still need to clean this up a wee bit of the wire brush. Picked up a wee trick from a fellow YouTuber, Gadget One Gadget One Six Four. UK or Gadget UK 164. Gadget UK 164 is name is. Um, use like a, a nail brush, you know, a scrubbing brush for doing washing your hands and nails just to gently sweep the excess solder away, all the little knobs that I still need to do that. Um, the physical battery damage has been removed. I mean, yeah, it's just under those chips there. All the rest of this green you see is from gassing. From the battery vapors. I mean the board's sitting like that in the machine and the vapors just seep down. Could be a little bit of leakage dripping down, so but I tend to think it's just gassing. Give this a wash down with alcohol now, check the continuity everywhere against the schematic. And like I said, these are going to have to come off eventually. But we'll leave them in for now. They might be good, I might be able to take them off and just clean the legs up and socket them. They might be fine. We need to wait and see. This I'll retain as well. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try the modern equivalent in there. I mean, this board's going into a machine that's going to work in somebody's collection, hopefully for a good few years. You can clearly see now that trace is shot, it's gone, but we'll just put a wee bit of Kynar wire across that from there to the V and that'll be fine. The V is okay. And the going to clean the crust layer up as well. That's been cleaned. Nice back to copper pads. So that's okay. So, some continuity checks to do now. Uh, this doesn't look too healthy, but it's okay. It's just the copper's been tarnished underneath, but I can tin that up. I don't want to go too much on the expense with flux and solder and whatever, because the owner of this board has already spent quite a bit of money on his collection. Getting it going, and this is going to be a spare board for his machines, but yeah, well... We'll get it working for them. So, it does look like it's going to take quite a few hours to repair this, so. There's quite a bit of testing to do. I mean, at the minute we can't even get it out of reset, but as I say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a switch in here and place this Q1 for the minute. I've got all the parts I need to fix this board. The total cost of it wasn't that much, so it's just time going to be spent on it now. Yeah, but, yeah. We'll get through it. There we go, cleaned up. Now I just want to show you something. I've had some mega boards in the past where the crystals got no continuity. I just want to show you very carefully. You see there are some traces running on the top side under this white paint. If you take the crystal off, gently sand away the top layer of the paint so you can see the traces underneath. Because more often than not, these ones are okay, but they break. And you won't see the break because it's under the paint. But if you can get under the paint and you see it there, you can... Usually it breaks just at the pads there when you take the crystal off. You can get underneath there, you can turn that trace back up and it'll be fine. You see this one runs for that cap, that one runs for that cap. 
usually just breaks when you take the crystal off because it's in quite tight down on the board you can sometimes when you rock it out you can sometimes snap the pad there's also two traces here this is one of the lamp drivers and one of its traces goes under the paint as well so you've got to sand that top layer away because you've got to inspect underneath there's also two vias there that run just under this cap so it's maybe worthwhile taking that cap off and having a look underneath. Right. On M1As you don't have this cap because it's soldered across the RAM instead. I say that trace doesn't look too healthy but I'll turn that up. It's got continuity, it's fine. And it looks like everything under the chips is fine. So next step is going to be get some sockets on, get the new parts on and see what sort of improvement we get. It won't, I don't think that'll be it fixed, but it'll be closer to being fixed. Okay, there's where we are so far. Replaced, replaced small stellar crystal. See, can't power it up yet because This will focus in. Excuse me for my shaking hands, can't do much about that. Should focus up in a minute. There we go, this trace here. It's broken right at the pad, it's broken right at the pad on the other side as well. And that trace there is a dress line A1 running through. Oh God's sake, focus. There we are. It's running through to pin two here, so until I fix this trace, this isn't going to take the board isn't going to take off because part of the address code that isn't running. So what I intend to do is I've got lots of kinar wire, it's a very very small wire you use to fix traces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through the via and so the one side of it there and one side of it. onto the back side of it there you can see with the light for the the phone camera there's green right through there but there's no through hole pad missed there at all the battery's kind of at the way right through it so I might before I solder just dab a little tiny bit of bare wire in IPA and actually try and clean through the hole but once I've done that, I'm going to solder at the end of that trace, just at the very edge of the via there. And that should remake that trace, which will give us our A1 back. Uh, anybody doing this, get yourself a Farnell's account, because these things are still plentiful and still cheap. They still sell thousands of the things. I see crystal difference still. I put Q1 back in for the minute. I'm just curious to see what it does after I replace this, remake this trace because that chip, although it's not getting a signal to A1, it seemed to be doing what it's meant to do. These two definitely weren't. I had pins one and two high at the same time, which is impossible because uh, U6 is an inverter. The thing to note, I can't show sure you really sold them on the camera, but Anytime you're doing this with these boards, ground yourself first. The casing of this is the screws in this are to earth because the casing's earth. Um, or if you could, you could keep the power supply plugged in and just touch the ground pins on there, and that will ground you through the power supply as long as it's plugged in. I think anyway. It's what I tend to do anyway, and I've had plenty of success for it. You, you just ground yourself on something. You could even ground yourself at the side of your fridge. You could ground yourself at the side of the radiator or whatever. Just get static off your body before you touch this. There's some of the parts on here you can actually kill with the tiniest parts for static. I've not had it happen yet. 
but it can happen. You could be touching something and be fixing something on here and blow something else up. And then your board doesn't doesn't work and you're tearing your hair out. Why? And it's because you've had a wee static shock and it's gone through one of these parts. Then just ground yourself before you or wear a wrist strap so you're grounded all the time. Personal preference. Get wrist straps for a few quid. Out in Maplands well they're still around, far enough to them as well, and you can get them off eBay, but just make sure you get something to take any stray electrons off your body before you get to working on this. So anyway, I'm going to have to think about it. the more I look at that trace, the more I think I might as well put a jumper bar underneath. But I, I don't want to have jumper bars everywhere on the back of this board. It starts looking like, they can start looking like spaghetti junction. They can get them caught in things. And, and I've seen some horror stories with jumper bars. So we'll have a go at fixing that trace. Flux it up clean it up. I've already cleaned back and front of the IPA so bit of flux, get a bit of very fine kind of wear through that hole and solder both sides and hopefully make it some more activity out of this thing. Alright. Let's go out for a flux pen. Maplins are still trading at the minute. Got a flux pen. Right. Um I fixed that trace there. What well, it does is I put a very, very, very fine bit of wire through, straight through the via, flux the Nintendo onto there, and flux the Nintendo on there. You can see the mean knob of solar where it goes through the via there. And that's a good solar joint. Now, we're almost there. Uh, it's maybe going to be a bit tricky to do this one hand but we're almost there still got the lights of death at the minute but here the difference in that clock there we've got a good strong clock we've also got a reset going manic It's got absolutely nuts. Now that's not a fault with this chip or this chip. These chips are brand new. What I noticed was, even though I've repaired this trace here, that's that trace there, I get nothing out of this. I get absolutely nothing from pin 1. And that is address line A0. It comes through here from pin 14 of this chip here, which is U2, pin 13, sorry. Pin 13 of U2, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we're getting absolutely nothing from it. Get some signals elsewhere. But we're getting nothing from this. Now, and this is where the problem can go wrong. If I probe along this, try very carefully to do it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So dress line A zero, dead. Okay. There's the next one. That's address line A1. A0 is dead. So you would think, yeah, I've got a bad CPU. Well, let me just reset a things. Turn this off. Turn it back on. Let's see if I can get it to do it. U2 is getting pretty hot, by the way. Those two lines are totally dead. Yeah, see, so. See, we've got nothing out there at all. So you suspect the CPU. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A0 dead. Activity on A1. Activity on A2. Activity on A3. Right. 
This is where a problem can go wrong. Let me stay off a minute. And turn it off. We're seeing there that we've got no signal on U11 pin 1. Now that bell's back to here. Bellin's another word for just doing continuity test. And I've got continuity from there to there. From pin 14 coming out of here, down to this. Pin 14 is the input, pin 13 is the output down to here. So you think, yeah, your CPU is bad, but it isn't. What's happening here is that this chip's internally shorted and it's loading that line down. It's got resistance on it rather than a higher low signal. So even though the continuity is good, the output from here appears to be floating because the input from here is loaded down. And I'll show you. See if I disable... I'll disable this chip here by cutting the... Hang on. I'll cut the pin. I don't know if you can see that. Can I get in there long enough to see? See? Oh, you got to love Samsung cameras. See, the pin is gone. Right. Now, there's a clue straight away. Now, it can't do anything meaningful because this chip here is disabled. Which means enable and queue can't get through, but it can't reset either. Because that gal is using some of these signals from this as part of its timing. So the board will reset and then just stay there. See? But watch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hear the difference. A1, A0. A0 no longer loaded down, so you've got a signal. CPU is fine. The fault was an internal short here at U2. Now don't worry by the way that we're getting a static signal for A0 and the rest are pulsing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See? Static. I'll try it over a bit more. Pulse. 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 No, oh, not a pulse there. What that's doing. Is because the board's come out of reset. It's set a certain address on the address bus there and I try to read it. But it can't because it can't do anything. It's trying because that's got a clock. And there isn't a clock going anywhere else. So nothing can happen. But the CPU is okay. And it's with these lights all being out like that, it's a good indicator that 686A1 is okay because that has to initialize that for those lights to go out. Obviously the board's frozen at the minute, but that is causing quite a big problem. So, I actually had a bit of an epic fail, I forgot to order one of them. Doesn't matter though, because I still have some spare ones from last time. Another repair of that, and if it can focus in on it, I don't know if it will. It's trying. Focus it over here because the board's in the way. There we go. It's a good quality part as well. SD components. So, we'll get that in there. Socket, get that in there and we'll see how we get on.
just out the sun. CPU gets hot. Okay, a lot of the times you'll see you will see CPU failures, and it's because that program card in the Mega Machine sits over the top, everything like this. You can get no cool into this. That's maybe one of the reasons why I made this program card. I modified this by putting a straight connector on it so it can go in like that. And to be honest, there's enough room to do it in the back of the cabinets. If I had a mega machine, I would modify the connector so the car starts straight up and I'd put a little heat sink on that. But, yeah. Yeah, there was something else I was going to mention. What is it? Ay, 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 ay. I forget now, yeah. Uh, this is a message to the owner. I can't test lamps and you've obviously got something wrong with the lamps, so... You may need to get this board sent off to someone with more test gear than me. Or you could maybe just get that transistor replaced there and see how you go on. But it's obvious how the lamp short somewhere because that's short. So. You think that one looks a bit crusty underneath? Mm, yeah, doesn't kind of get the idea that one was corroding under there for a while. So again, just need to clean the pads up a wee bit, but it's just all surface corrosion it was, and almost damage underneath the traces, they're all fine. So and pop a socket in this one and get a new chip in. Ugh, talk about piss take. So it reset and ran for a few seconds and then died. No activity anywhere, so saw that. I am going to take the CPU around the 68681 off. I've done the CPU already. Cleaned it up, the legs were crumbling on it. It looked not no bad from the outside, but underneath the legs were yellow green crumbling so and it just basically lost the well the liver wasn't getting anything from it so I'm gonna change out the CPU I'm gonna change out the RAM as well and I'm stopping for tonight I've cleaned all this up it's ready to accept a new socket yet again very lucky with the traces there's no damage traces under there but yeah, I know the board is going to run. I know this logic over here is fine. And all this stuff up here is probably fine apart from this here, but... Fitting the CPU now, socketing and replacing the CPU will probably do it. I mean, it was working, it's just the CPU has been damaged from this. But I think to build a proof it, I'll change out the RAM and some of these discrete components here as well. So, it's about 2 in the morning now. I'm stopping until the afternoon. And I'll report back. Right, so next morning. Show you the CPU and close up. Socket looks not bad. With buzz the continuity, it's okay. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is take off this RAM. Yep. Same story under the RAM. Traces are okay, but the pin positions were shot. So, taking that RAM off was not nice. Quite a lot of corrosion in the pads here. Again, the traces look okay. If I can look, get it to focus in, you can see. Yep. Back, back. There. You can see a discoloration under the solder mask there and there. Vapors for the battery had started to eat under the solder mask. It seems to be right underneath the RAM. 
I'm pretty confident that ram was okay, but the pins were completely corroded, so... In hindsight, it's probably a good idea that I took it off. Right, not only depressed myself anymore, we're making progress. We're doing a wee bit more than we thought we were going to have to. I mean, we thought we had it with this, but, well, we did, but the CPU decided it was going to die anyway. Clean this up. Socket that, socket that. I've got a brand new RAM for it. Not a 6264, but an equivalent, but I'll show you. And I've got a CPU I can put in that socket, and then we'll see how it's going. Yeah, it's a good job I ignored my previous idea and decided just to change out the RAM as well. It's pretty badly corroded there, some of the pads were in poor condition, but soldering them up, they're okay. CPU socket went on a dream, no problems there. Yeah. I guess sometimes you get that, sometimes the corrosion just gives you issues. It doesn't look pretty, but I'm sure you'll clean it up with IPA. Not often it'll be alright. It's just the level of corrosion that was under that ram socket that the pads were pretty destroyed, to be honest. Okay, so a few hours have passed since the last instalment. Friend kindly sent a brand new 68681, and it is brand new, it's sparkling new, so that's in. And been replaced, I end up replacing the, these, all four of these as well, because they were all going to run back there, so. They came out, we're almost running. It won't boot without pin 14 out. You know the pin 14 trick is stop reset working. I know the process I know the process is okay because I borrowed one at an MPU4 that's running. So the problem I've got at the minute is it's trying to initialize but it's it can't quite get there. It seems to be paying a lot of attention to reading the RAM. I bust all these pins out and thought they were fine, but yeah, if this can focus in. I don't know if you can see that, but that trace is broken right at the pad, right there. It sometimes buzzes out, sometimes not, depending on what angle the board's at. So I'm thinking I can maybe just very, very gently. drag solder across that. I'm going to flux, I flux the hell out of the now and I'm going to see if I can just turn the track up right in the corner there and solder across it. And don't worry about these scratches by the way, they're nothing. Right, so, hold on. You know what guys, sometimes I scare myself. I can't believe that solder, that wee solder on the time worked. You see the trace joined back to the pin now. So I'll just check it for continuity and I'll rig this thing back up and see what it does. Alright, never again! Never again! This board's led me a merry dance all morning. It doesn't help that I discovered after a lot of probing about that the gal for the board is dead. Trying to run, CPU was trying, was trying to run, but dead. Dead, dead, dead. What's the spell of myth here? That. That's an M1 of your gal. And an M1B board. Running. Running fine. Well, I say, oh, I say run, it's almost, almost running. Sometimes these lights don't go off in the right order on this test run. This 68681 is a little bit glitchy. I don't think it's genuine. It looks absolute brand new, but I think it's a counterfeit part. Because it just doesn't perform right. But it's running for the minute. So, 
It's had a lot of different things done to it. Um, said when I took the CPU off and the RAM off, they were so green underneath, but you got lucky that the traces were okay. I'd managed to dab that small trace there back together. Uh, owner of this board bought this, so and sent it up to me, so and decided to change that out anyway. And the legs and these were a little bit green, so I changed them out. And we've got to that stage now. Uh, I found out the gal was faulty because I don't know if you remember earlier on in the video that these lights were going off and then nothing else was happening. Well the lights were going off and nothing else was happening because there was no very little address decoding coming out of this. Some of the pins were stuck on well the other one that I've just launched somewhere. I don't know I I'm not sure, but I don't know if these are erasable and rewritable. I may have a go at rewriting that one. I've got the image for a gal somewhere. But, yeah. So. It's working. Processor. Is out an MPU4. I've taken one of my spare processors and put it in the MPU4 so to get that back up and running the RAM is brand spanking new and I mean new it's not new old stock it's new straight out of the wrapper it is a A6238 A623308A-70 It's an equivalent to 6264, but it's not a 6264, it's a, it's a brand new part. And I've been finding when I'm looking online at the component cells, there are quite a, a wealth of different types of 28 pin RAM you could probably fit in there. You could buy a onboard battery RAM and fit it in there. It's like some equivalent to what Dallas used to do for real time clocks. Well, they do RAM versions of it as well, and you could bung that in there, especially the older M1As. You can get 24 pin ones pretty cheap, and then that would run without a battery because it's all on board. And it's got about, I think the manufacturer's website says it's got a 10 year lifespan. So that would sort of get rid of your battery problem without coin cells or anything. You, you wouldn't need any sort of battery on the board in there. And they're sealed units, so it wouldn't leak either. Crystal's in modern style, it's a micro crystal, but it works fine. Uh, I just want to show. Guys that are watching the video, what some of these lines should look like. Uh, IRQ. Should look like that. And then... Memory ready. Memory ready is supposed to be a fast pulse like that. Now that was... I was trying to help somebody out and we couldn't understand why we had a fast pulse like that. I hadn't needed to check that on any other boards that have been working before because, uh, well, memory red line's been working, but on his it wasn't. And then, obviously, we're address decoding at the gal. Now, that line's high because we're not trying to select the high end of a ROM or whatever. It only normally uses pin 19 there to select the ROM. Uh, that's the IO enable line from the gal. Should look like that. So if you get, you're working on a board and you see that, don't think, oh I've got a short or something. Don't let it confuse you. It should look like that. I think it's just because of the amount of times it has to access this part here. So, that's three quarters of the battle now. I've got to figure out what to do with this now. I'm not sure if I want to touch that to be honest. Because the trace is blown right the way through the board and the board's burnt. There should be a ground lead that comes off of there. And connects through to that. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. I might have a go. I might cut off the end of the connector and see if I fit a new one. But it's going to be an absolute get to do. And I'm going to have to reinforce it underneath and everything to take all the pressure off. 
But I'm not doing that just now. I gotta get some for dinner. I've, got to get f I've been on this all day, probing away and looking back and forth at the schematic and figuring out the order of how things work. I mean, a three thousand pound logic analyzer would probably come in handy for doing these. I know some people who actually have one. But you can do it with Logic Pro as well, it just takes a lot longer. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get it right away. We've had that with a couple of boards that have been fixing for people. And sometimes you, you get lost in the weeds for a wee bit. And it's handy enough you can do the, re the pin 14 trick with that, but that doesn't always allow you to boot the board. It might have done had this gal been working, they are slightly different. This one deals with its inputs and outputs slightly differently, so... You can lock the board out of reset with pin 14 out, but you don't necessarily get anything meaningful out of it either. I mean, it'll try and start, but usually all you get is you get the lights flicker. They'll flicker and go on and out and do random things. It's I'm not sure why, but I do know for a fact that it would run with pin 14 out if I had an M1B gal. But strangely, but true, it runs the rest of the board when M1A gal. No bother. So, oh. Uh, the intention now is I'm going to leave this on all day. And all night, probably through to my bedtime, which usually falls about 2 in the morning when my day's off. Yeah, I know. Like burn the midnight on, but trust me, if I try and go to sleep at 10 o'clock, everybody else in the house will stay awake. So I'll be tossing and turning all night. I just wait till I'm tired. Now, this has been on for 45 minutes now. Uh, it's working. After it's had a good sold test, take the program card back out to it, I'll put game ROMs in, check they fire up, I'll do continuity checks again on everything, make sure no traces are blown open because they, they can do, the traces are so fragile on this that they can blow open while it's running. Oh uh, yeah, it's working for now so just to let you know, James, you're up and running. As far as booting up's concerned. And, well, somebody sent me a box and more things to do, so... Maybe I'll have to have a look at them. Not anytime soon, though. Alright, bye for now.